Jim Gill is key the Greyhounds running attack, while receivers Joe Alvarado and Craig Servone are Schultz's main targets in the passing game. From Veterans Field in Naugatuck, it's Holy Cross against Naugatuck in an NBL matchup on Cable 10 Sports Valley High School Football Game of the Week. Hello again, everyone. Ed Clemens, Buddy Chernovitz coming to you from Veterans Field in Naugatuck. Buddy, when I had a chance to talk uh, on the telephone with Jerry Charleglio, you know, he made a point of talking about Naugatuck and, of course, praising the program and, and, and noting something that you and I have said about Naugatuck through the years, and that is that they improve as the season goes on. But I have a little different twist. Jerry sometimes tends to downplay his team. His team has made tremendous improvement. They opened up the season 0-3. They have won their last four out of five games, and they come in as a pretty good football team towards the end of this season. Well, both teams have a lot to play for tonight. It's a large division championship game. Both teams have struggled a little bit. Holy Cross has come along and really um, gotten stronger as the year going uh, has gone on. Nogatuk has had a couple games I think they'd like to replay. So I think for both teams, this is a very big game in their season, and it's going to go a long way to determine how these kids are going to go in the off season. Now, for the Nogatuk Greyhounds, of course, anytime you defense them, you have to worry about the wing tee. And uh, Billy Schultz has done a great job. Uh, for the Greyhounds, especially in the last two weeks, with perhaps their two biggest wins of the season against Watertown and last weekend right here against Crosby. Well, they struggled three weeks ago against Seymour and mm -hmm. then put it together in the last two weeks. Schultz is going to have to have a good football game. Holy Cross has a strong defense. Both teams are very strong defensively. I think Naugatuck is going to have the edge in moving the football. Jerry Charlie has said that they've struggled a little bit on offense. be interesting to see. They're going to have to be able to move the football here to be in the football game. And we'll be right back with Holy Cross Naugatuck football right after this. This fall, Telemedia is proud to announce the addition of Marcus Communications to the Telemedia family. This merger will provide Telemedia the opportunity to reshape your cable TV viewing experience with new and exciting services. As a leader in entertainment and communication services, Telemedia is committed to the continuing improvement of the telecommunications network serving your community. Welcome to the Telemedia family. Welcome to the future of cable TV. Welcome back, everyone, to Veterans Field in Naugatuck. Holy Cross will get the football to begin this uh, Naugatuck Valley League game, a, a game that has uh, usually been very well played down through the years, and there's quite a rivalry between Holy Cross of Waterbury and Naugatuck. Greyhounds, the, the Greyhounds are coming into the football game with a 6-2 and two mark, and the Crusaders even up at 4-4. Four and four. And we've been informed that the Greyhounds did win the opening coin flip, so they've deferred their option to the second half. Kicking off, that is Servone. He kicks it short to one of the up men, and it is uh, in possession of Holy Cross, or... Nogatuck came up, came up with it. it. I don't know if it was by design or not, but anyway, the Greyhounds will go on offense first, so they recovered the opening kickoff here at Veterans Field. Let's take a look at that offense. The quarterback is Bill Schultz. The running backs are Kyle Wells, Jim Gillis, and Paul Singley. The split end is Joe Alvarado. And now the line, the center Al Molnar. The guards are Jay Leahy and Chris Epperson. The tackles are Mike Farrell and Nick Bonsek. And the tight end is Craig Servone. Alvarado on the recovery of the opening kickoff and the Greyhounds excellent field position at the 40 of Holy Cross. We'll give you the Holy Cross defense when we get an opportunity. And they'll run Gillis the fullback and Gillis gets about four yards on the play. Let's take a look at the Holy Cross defense. The front four, the tackles are Greg Latanzio and Russ Northrup. 
the ends are Chris Charleglio and Joe Carmody, the linebackers, and this is a fine linebacking crew for Coach Jerry Charleglio, Joe Salvati, Ron Turmel, and Matt Malone, and now the secondary for Holy Cross, Ivan Lusick, Rocco Gentili, Mark Weaver, and Alex War. <coughs> Second and six coming up for the Hounds. We're just underway from here at Veterans Field. The give is to Kyle Wells, who was running out of the right halfback spot. And Wells ran the football inside the 30-yard line. Just a straight handoff coming off the left side. Wells does a great job picking up the first down. Nogatuck running very hard inside, running over the blocking of Farrell Leahy Amola for that first down. So the Greyhounds pick up a first down from the, after their second play from scrimmage. They have it at the 29. Uh, let's make that the 30 of Holy Cross. And there is a fumble on the play. And Greyhounds will hold it onto it. Jim Gillis was the Nargothic ball carrier. The exchange problem is the ball was never put into the stomach of Gillis by the quarterback, Billy Schultz. Gillis able to recover it. It'll be a second, about 11 for the Greyhounds. Well, the ball is directly at the 30-yard line of Holy Cross. Greyhounds once again are recovering the opening kickoff here. Schultz back to throw. And he was throwing for Alvarado. Alvarado ends up with the football, and he gets in right at the pylon for the first score of the evening. Coverage by Alex War on the play. What a great catch by the 6'4", 210-pound senior receiver. Ball flutters for Schultz, but receiver Alvarado does an excellent job going up and getting it, then getting into the end zone for the first score, and very quickly Naugatuck jumps on top here 6-0 over Holy Cross 10-09 of this first quarter and kicking the extra point will be Ricky De La Rosa to attempt the point after, it is up, it is good We've got a lot of time. 10.09 remaining here in the first quarter of play. And Naugatuck has taken a quick 7 to nothing lead. Buddy uh, talked to Coach Jerry Charleglio of the Holy Cross Crusaders before the game. And he asked the, the coach what's been the problem offensively. Uh, we really have trouble moving the ball, uh, getting first downs. We don't even talk about scoring all the time. We talk about getting first downs so that we get field position. And it hasn't happened. Consequently, uh, other teams are in four-down territory all the time, and we're one, two, three, and out. We have to play better on offense. Welcome back, everyone, to Veterans Field in Naugatuck. Buddy also talked to head football coach Craig Peters up here at Naugatuck, and he asked the veteran coach how he would grade his team at this point of the season. Well, we're about a B-plus probably because uh, we had some disappointments early. We lost the uh, Wolcott, and we lost the Seymour, and... Uh, you know, but you can't ask for a better group of kids. They work real hard every day, and they get better every week. So uh, we're very, very pleased with that. Uh, this is a big game for us tonight because it's uh, the largest division championship uh, as far as uh, the large division goes. The only way we play that off in the league, the only way it matters is if Seymour got beat and didn't go to a, um, a state game, then, then it would have some big implications tonight. But I don't think that will be happening. They're playing Kennedy tonight. Welcome back to Veterans Field in Naugatuck. Buddy, one of, uh, one of Coach Charleglio's comments to us before the game was that uh, since his team has struggled offensively, it, it's, it was very important that the opponent did not jump on top and uh, uh, because his team has, has struggled offensively. Well, that was and certainly a problem for them, and as, as Jerry talked about early, recovering the onside kick or the, the opening kickoff by Naugatuck with great field position and then five plays later getting into the end zone. I think Jerry Chalegli has to be very concerned. He's worried about his, the ability of his offense to move the football. He's already down to the Naugatuck Greyhounds and his offense hasn't touched the football once. So we'll see what happens with this play. And returning the football, that's Mark Weaver straight up the middle of the field for the Crusaders. 
Let's take a look now at the Holy Cross offense and the backfield. The quarterback is Tom Brunetti. He's a good one. He started all last year as a sophomore. 5'10", 165-pound junior. Fullback in the eye is Matt Malone. Brian Benkowski is the tailback. The sophomore moved into the starting lineup a few weeks into the season. The split end is Miguel Padro. The flanker is Ivan Lusick, and there's the line for the Holy Cross Crusaders. As they begin their first play from scrimmage, and they're going to give to the tailback, that is the sophomore Binkowski. And Binkowski is stopped by Jim Gillis along with Kyle Wells. And let's take a look at that uh, Greyhound defense. The front five, the nose guard is Roger Drown. The tackles are Mike Farrell and Al Molnar. The ends are Jay Leahy and Craig Servone. The backers are Mike Green, Jim Gillis, and the monster back is Kyle Wells in the secondary, patrolled by Gary Diaz, uh, Ken Hayward, and Paul Singley. Second down for Holy Cross, and they're going to hand off to the fullback and one of the captains for Holy Cross, Matt Malone, a 6'1", 195-pound senior. Try and just slide the fullback straight up inside. You see the pull by the guard and then coming behind him the fullback very close to first down yardage will be third and short for Holy Cross when I get a chance I'll make a point about the offensive line of Holy Cross and some of the problems they've been really beset with injuries especially on that offensive line and we'll get into that as the game goes on a handoff, a loose ball on the play. Meanwhile, we also have a flag drop. The officials indicate the Naugatuck has recovered and if that flag was going to be against Holy Cross, it's the Naugatuck Greyhounds football. And that's what it's going to be. Brunetti comes down the line, tries to get the football to his fullback, and there is a very poor mesh there. Malone never had it. Recovery is going to come by number 51, Al Molar, and Molar puts the Crusaders inside the 40-yard line at about the Holy Cross 38 in a second turnover for the Holy Cross Crusaders. Excellent field position for Naugatuck. So Al Molnar coming up with a big fumble recovery for Naugatuck. And again, the Greyhounds with excellent field position, their second uh, possession. And they're going to give to Singley this time. A flag is dropped in. The tackle made by War in the secondary. This will be a holding penalty. The flag came from the umpire. It's going to be a hold, and it's going to push the Crusader or push Nuggetuck back. You see the inside handoff. Good effort by Nuggetuck, but it's going to be negated by the holding penalty. So it will push the ball back close to the 50-yard line. So we'll bring the football back to the 48-yard line of Holy Cross. Naugatuck leads it. We're early in the first quarter. The Greyhounds lead it 7 to nothing. Single back set on first and long, and the senior quarterback back to throw. Throws out to the near sidelines, and he completes it. Servone on the reception, the tight end, and Ron Turmel on the tackle for Holy Cross. See the receiver just slide into the flat. Schultz does a good job getting the ball, delivering it. Turmel there on the tackle, picked up about three, maybe four yards. It'll be a second, about 17 for the first down. So second down coming up for the Greyhounds. They have it at the 46 of Holy Cross. I back look now for the Hounds. And they'll get to the tailback. Kyle Wells, a tailback. He slowed up and stopped after a pickup of one Carmody, the defensive end, first to get to him. Carmody is 6'2", 195-pound senior. So Vadi is also going to come in here, number 44, and get a piece of the tackle. He'll come from his linebacker position. Good job defensively by the Crusaders. This is a big series for them. They cannot go down to, to Naugatuck here early by two scores. So big series after that turnover. It's a big third down here for Naugatuck. They've still got about 17 kick to get the first down. they got to get inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. Third and 17. Schultz on a play fake. 
And he's going to be taken down on the play. Number 37, Mike Lampo for Holy Cross. And Nongatuck is in a punting situation. They come out of the bootleg, and Schultz is going to get pressure from Charleglio. Charleglio gets a piece of his leg, forces him deeper, and then good job by Lampo putting him to the turf. It's a punting situation as the Holy Cross defense came up very big. Ball started on the 38, Holy Cross 38-yard line. Nogatuck's going to be forced to punt from their own 42. So an excellent job by the Crusader defense on that series. Gary Diaz is the uh, Nogatuck punter, and Gary standing inside his 30. Ivan Lusick back, single safety for Holy Cross. And Lusick uh, accepts the, the punt. He didn't call for a fair catch, and he falls forward to the 34-yard line, and that's where Holy Cross will take uh, over uh, on this uh, their second possession of the ball game. But we'll, we'll be coming back with that possession right after this. Housatonic Lumber and Derby. We're the professional shop. Here's why. I use Housatonic Lumber because of their on-time and prompt delivery service. They always deliver within 24 hours. We use Housatonic Lumber because they have a great sales staff and a fully stocked yard of quality materials. I use Housatonic Lumber for the uh, competitive pricing and the quality of the material. Housatonic Lumber, 23 Factory Street in Derby. We're the professional shop. We're back at Veterans Field in Naugatuck, so Holy Cross dodged a bullet after turning over the football. Actually, they turned it over twice in this football game. Once uh, one led to a score, and they're going to hand off. That's to the fullback. Matt Malone, the senior captain on the play, gets some good room, running room, before he's taken down by Jay Leahy for Naugatuck, a first down for Holy Cross. This is a great run by Malone as he finds an opening over that left side. 55 comes in, Leahy to make the stop, but a first down for Holy Cross as they're across their 44, about the 45 yard line, very close to that 45. Good job by Matt Malone on that carry. Holy Cross will use two wide receivers either side of the field. They're going to give this time to the sophomore tailback, Binkowski, but he is stopped by number Mike, uh, Mike Farrell, number 67, one of the Naugata captains. A lot of seepage inside as Farrell just comes right through. They try to run a little counter, no place to go. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. You get a look at the Naugata cheerleaders on this near side. And other than the Naugata cheerleaders, there's not a lot of folks in the stands here tonight watching this one. Miguel Padro goes to the top part of your screen. That is Lusick. Well, now he's out of your picture. And a play fake. Brunetti winds up, shows a good arm, throws it downfield in the direction of Padre on the play. It is incomplete. And it'll bring up a third down for Holy Cross. Good coverage as Brunetti gets back. He really throws into coverage. Just tried to get a guy down the sideline and try and reach him with the football. Well covered on that. And the ball actually tipped away by number 23 for Naugatuck or number 83. Ken Hayward. Good job on coverage by the Greyhounds. So the Crusaders after gaining one first down and this possession now are faced with the third and ten and they have it at their 44 yard line. First quarter action from Naugatuck. Naugatuck leads it seven to nothing. Bernetti back to throw under a rush. He gets whacked but he gets it off and he completes the pass down to the 40 and inside the 40 yard line. He went to Ivan Lusick on the play for the completion. Gary Diaz on the tackle for the Greyhounds along with Ken Hayward. Brunetti is gonna get drilled as he releases it. He stays in there and then throws a perfect strike. Ball caught and then the extra run will pick up a first down for the Holy Cross Crusaders. A good job by Brunetti staying in there as he got drilled as he released the football. We're well, discussing here with Naugatuck, there's a problem. There's a penalty on this one. I'm not sure what it will be because there was only the ball carrier. Unless it was a clip behind the play by the Crusaders. They blew it out. And so we'll bring it back. So a positive yardage. And there's the indication. We saw a clip on the play for Holy Cross. 
So they lose the first down plus the yardage. It'll be a third, about 11 or 12 to pick up that first down. And mistake cost the Crusaders here in this first quarter as they had a drive going. See if they can make the big play here on third and very long. Well, Brunetti has shown so far he can throw the football, and he is a very good quarterback, and he's got another year to go at Holy Cross. Play fake, and then he gives to the second back. That's the sophomore running back trying to get it outside. That is Binkowski, and Binkowski has picked up the first down before he's taken down by Gillis on the play. Brian Binkowski, a 5'11", 180-pound sophomore. Counter play as they fake to the fullback and then come back with Binkowski. A lot of people for Holy Cross getting on in front of that one. Fisher leads it, gets him around the corner, good block, and then Binkowski picks up the necessary yardage for the first down as he's down to the Naugatuck 43. You get a look at Craig Peters as Holy Cross was able to convert a third and very long on a running play. So first down for Holy Cross, they're at the 42. And off is uh, to Matt Malone. Malone tied up after a short pickup, maybe one yard on the play. Joe Suskovich in a defensive tackle on the stop for Norgata. Brunetti comes out. They run a wide belly. No place to go. Malone is dragged down for about a half a yard gain, second and about nine. You can see the ball right at about the 41-yard line. Second down for Holy Cross in the first quarter from here at Naugatuck. Naugatuck leads it 7 to nothing in this Naugatuck Valley League contest. Oh! Oh! Fake, and Brunetti wings it, and it's picked off by the Hounds. Kyle Wells, the monster back on the pick for the Greyhounds, and the Naugatuck Greyhounds will take over on the play. Brunetti tries to force this. There is good coverage. Wells along with two other Nuggetuck players in the middle of this as he tries to force it to Carmody. There's one, two, three. Good coverage and a great pick by Nuggetuck as they stop the drive. They'll take over on their own 35. So first down for the Greyhounds. Third turnover for Holy Cross in the game. They can ill afford that. They're going to hand off. That's Kyle Wells. He is taken down by War. What a great defensive play by the 5'10", 155-pound senior. War just flies up from his cornerback position. Watch he takes out the legs of the running back right here. Just knocks him to the ground. Just a, a tremendous effort as that young man just takes the corner, plays it tough, and... And that's it's a loss of a yard. And the gentleman in the picture just a moment ago, Steve Gessick from up here at Naugatuck, and we enlisted his uh, young son Kyle as a, as a spotter, and Kyle is doing a great job here in the press box. Second down for Naugatuck, they're at the 35. They lead it 7 to nothing. Bill Schultz throws, it's a little bit over the head of uh, the intended receiver, the tight end Craig Cervone. Termel on coverage, number 55, but Schultz just throws the ball high. Unable to get it. Be a third down again in about 11 for Naugatuck. Another big third and long. 319 left to go here in this first period. Well, one area that Jerry Charleglio touched on with us is the fact that his defense has really played well all year long, and they have really held the Crusaders in an awful lot of football games. The handoff inside, it ends up in the hands of Paul Singley. This is a crisscross counter that they run. They hand off, come back to the inside. Number 50 holding his ground is Charleglio, and he just drills the ball carrier. Fourth down, it's a punting situation. You see number 26 coming off with a little bit of a limp after that one. That's Singley, the ball carrier, as Chaleglio hit him just after the handoff. A great defensive series again for the Holy Cross Crusaders. And Chris Chaleglio, the coach's son, wearing a lineman's number because he's been pressing the duty on the offensive line. Kick is off. That is by the punter, Gomulinski. Good punt and excellent coverage. 
catch is made right at about the 30, and the tackle is going to be made right there by number 86 for Nogatuck, and that's Jason Freeman, the junior, does a good job with the special teams coverage. Well, let me... Holy Cross will start on their own 30-yard line. Let me correct myself. The uh, Naugatuck punter, of course, Gary Diaz, uh, punting the football. And Holy Cross now with the football deep into the first quarter of play. At the 30-yard line, Holy Cross, they're down 7 to nothing, but they've turned it over a few times. They like to hold on to the football. That is Binkowski running the football off the left side up to the 34-yard line. Again, they come back with the counter that they were successful with on that third and long just a moment ago. Minkowski tries to get to the outside. They've got both 74 Fisher and 77 Latizaro in there trying to pull for him. And uh, this time, Minkowski picks up only about four yards. So it'll be a second and about six. The ball sitting right at about the 34-yard line for the Crusaders. Second down for Holy Cross. They're at their 34-yard line. And they'll give again, that is to the tailback, Binkowski spins forward, falls forward across the 35 up to the 37. It'll be a third and short. This is just a blast. They follow the fullback, Binkowski turns there, able to pick up a couple yards on his own. He's got a third and make the boys. You're going to look at the entire yeah, yeah. cheerleading staff here. And it is a very, very comfortable evening here as we are in the end of November, the second to last game for both these football teams. Next week we'll be on Thursday watching Margaret Tech again take on the Ansonia Chargers down at Jarvis Field. That's Brunetti completing the pass for a Holy Cross first down. He completes it to Padro on the tackle for Naugatuck in the secondary to junior Bob Plier. Nice turnout as the receiver just goes down to the pole, turns at the first down marker, steps out and the Quarterback Brunetti hits him with a nice throw. Good stop on the play by number 23 for Naugatuck. It'll be a first down, though, for the Holy Cross Crusaders. And that's, how do you say that, Bob Pludel? No, the Plurd. 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 Bob Plurd. Plurd. First down for Holy Cross. They're at their 45. We're deep into the first quarter. The second back on a little bit mis uh, misdirection on the play. Binkowski is stopped pretty much at the line of scrimmage. Derek Clark coming in from his linebacker spot on the tackle for Naugatuck. Clark just blew through the gap and he is in the backfield. Binkowski unable to get started and he is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Good job by the junior Derek Clark on that first down. Greyhounds will alternate, they'll rotate I should say, their three backers, Mike Green, Jim Gillis, and Derek Clark will alternate at that uh, middle linebacker spot for Naugatuck. Second and ten. On the option and the pitch, that is Binkowski, and he's going to be close to the line to gain. It's going to depend on the spot. I don't pe think he's picked it up. Clark again on the stop for Naugatuck. Going to get a holding penalty. Watch the fly come in as this is a great option. Just a reverse, a little fake inside the hole of linebackers. Great pitch by Brunetti. Binkowski gets to the outside. You're going to see a fly right where that, fly, uh, that block came as he came close to that first down. It's going to be a blocking behind the back or a hold against that outside receiver and it's going to move this one back and negate the run by Binkowski and this is a big one it'll be a spot foul so this is going to hurt the Crusaders again so the Crusaders have had a couple of very good offensive plays wiped out to via the penalty another clipping penalty against that outside receiver blocking the Naugatuck corner and it will set up the Crusaders on the 34, 33 yard line there, and it'll be a second, and it'll be a lot. I gotta get my calculator, about well, 21. A ball from the scoreboard, it is second and 22 coming up. Brunetti Ooh, plays he's back, got him in the he's got Carmody in the seam, and the tight end gets down inside the 40 of Norgatuck. Great, great Before ball. Before he's taken down by Hayward in the secondary. A fine play by Brunetti. Carmody comes off, he runs the out, little out into the seam, gets up in there wide open, and once he catches the football, breaks the tackle there, Diaz can't get him, and then he goes down before Hayward grabs him up for the first down inside the 40 at about the 39 yard line. A good play by the Crusaders for the first down. And Holy Cross might not be able to get this play off, and that has happened here because the clock, the is being kept right up here in the press box. So that's the official time. 
We have run out of time here in the first quarter. Our first quarter score from here at Veterans Field in Naugatuck, Naugatuck 7, and Holy Cross of Waterbury, nothing. Oh, I met him. Did you poke him? Yeah, I poked him, but he didn't laugh. I have my own cubicle, my own computer, my own telephone. I work in freelance graphics. You have to get coffee. Oh, no. So yeah. this was a legitimate yep, it was. program. But you're already have hands-on. Oh, yeah, I already yeah. have the experience. Is it possible that you could go immediately to president? Yes, I believe I can do that. Welcome back, everyone, to Naugatuck. And Naugatuck leads it by a score of seven to nothing, but Holy Cross has been really impressive offensively. We know they've had the problems offensively. That's been well documented, but they have looked good moving the football thus far this evening. And the hand is to the short side of the field. That has been Koski. And let's see who made the tackle for Greg, the Greyhounds. Might have been 97. Might have been Mark Nagrapski. Try and get Binkowski to the outside. I think number 51 along with, it is 97 along with 51 getting in for that stop. Good job preventing Binkowski from turning the corner. Be a second down for the Crusader offense. Crusaders once again, four and four coming into the game. Naga took it six and two. Brunetti with excellent time, throws it out. He was going for Lusick on the play. It goes incomplete, but Brunetti had the time from his offensive line, and that is a patched up offensive line for Holy Cross. He's gonna get good protection from number 77, Latizaro, as Brunetti has time to throw, really doesn't find his receiver who is crossing the field. It'll be a third down for the Crusaders here with about nine to go. They've gotta get inside the 30-yard line to about the 28-yard line of the Nogatuck the Greyhounds for that first down. Third down, I formation. Another play fake. A, a lot of time again, and Brunetti hits the receiver. Matt Malone, who was coming across on the on the play. Ken Hayward on the stop, but they're going to move the chains. It's another first down for Holy Cross. Again, as Eddie just said, great protection. This time, Trammell out in front of Brunetti. Brunetti hits Malone as the 30, and he is very close to that first down. He will pick it up. A good job crossing the field, and Brunetti picking him up for that first down. So the ball right at about the 27-yard line for the Crusaders. An excellent drive for Holy Cross. First down. And they're going to give to the fullback. That is Malone on the play. And another flag is dropped on the play. Well, this one's going to go. There's a flag here as they just try and get the fullback quick up inside. You see number 85, Suskovich with the stop, but there's going to be a personal foul tacked on to this one, and it's going to go against the Greyhounds, and it's going to move the ball for a first down, down inside the 15. Buddy Somewhere Hope. inside that 15. Uh, excuse me, Edward. Go no, ahead. No problem. Uh, Buddy, I was going to just comment that Holy Cross now is well within the range of one of the best field goal kickers and place kickers in the entire state of Connecticut. That is Jeff Gomulinski, who, and uh, easily within his range, and he's kicked it already, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, six field goals on the season. But I, I believe Holy Cross is, they're looking at six right here after the personal foul they have it at the uh, 13 of Naugatuck. We've got a good one for you in our Cable 10 Sports Valley High School Football Game of the Week. Another play fake, and Brunetti has been excellent here in the first half. He completes it inside the 10-yard line. Let me see if I can get the number of the receiver. It's number 24. That's Lusick. Lusick just comes again to the outside boundary. Brunetti has good time Throws well on the run, puts the ball just in a catchable position as Lusick is going out of bounds about the nine-yard line. Actually, the eight, it'll be a second, about four for that first down for the Crusader offense. Kyle Wells on the last stop for Naugatuck, but Holy Cross knocking on the door, on the pitch, that is Pen Benkoski, and Benkoski is going to get close to the yard it's needed for a first down as he gets it inside the five-yard line as they ran him to the short side of the field. Good job on the option by Brunetti again. 
Just comes out on the lead. A little bit of a fake to the fullback. Fullback makes a pretty good block. That's Malone. Minkowski gets the pitch, turns the corner, and again, very close to the first down. He's going to be about a half a football away, as you can see. It. Down marker at the top of your screen, just that close to that first down for the Crusaders. Padro out to the right side, Lusick out to the left. Third and about a foot for a first down. And Brunetti hands off to the fullback. He tripped on the play, hands off to Malone. Malone's picked up the first down at the two. Malone comes straight ahead. Watch Brunetti as he trips over his guard, gets the ball out to Malone. Malone, as he goes down, reaches for that goal line just short. It'll be a first and goal from about the one and a half for this Holy Cross Crusader. And this has to be a very, very uplifting drive for Coach Chaleglio as he's been concerned about his offense's ability to move the ball. They moved it very well in this first half. Let's see if they can cash in right now with a touchdown. And tight, double tight end, and they... Uh, a full house backfield, they run Binkowski and Binkowski slides into the end zone and Holy Cross has scored in this football game early in the second quarter. Since the two mistakes by Holy Cross, they've really dominated in this game. They've been able to run the football and throw. Now they have cashed in with a score and we'll see if they can convert for the tying point here as Binkowski just goes over that right side, gets down low into the end zone for the touchdown. And he was behind the blocks of uh, Mike Lampo along with uh, Malone on the play. And this is almost automatic for Holy Cross because once again I talked about this, this young man as a field goal kicker. Well, Jeff Gomulinski, he is just a fantastic place kicker and only a sophomore. It is up, it's through the uprights, and we are knotted here in Naugatuck. And we've got ourselves a good football game. Always is between Holy Cross and Naugatuck. Very impressed with the Holy Cross Crusaders' ability after the kickoff they lost the kickoff on a mistake they fumbled in their second possession after Holy or after Naugatuck had scored and they've been able to really move the football very well against what is a pretty good Naugatuck defense. Naugatuck may be 6-2 but their defense has played well especially in the last five games and the Crusaders who have really struggled on offense have done a good job in moving the football and getting seven points here. I think one of the big factors too and we touched on it too the quarterbacking of Tom Brunetti. Uh, Brunetti has thrown the ball extremely well. You know, we had Holy Cross twice last year, buddy. First time we saw Brunetti, that was against Ansonia. That was a powerful Ansonia team last year. Then we saw him later in the season. Well, actually, we didn't see him later in the season because he did not play in this game last year. He had a hand injury, and he was unable to go against Naugatuck. But we know that Brunetti can quarterback, and he's done a great job here this evening. That was Singley, excuse me, Bud Singley, uh, knocked down on the kickoff by right, Silvati. Joe Silvati just does a great job of breaking the wedge. Watch number 44 come right through into Singley. He takes two Naugatuck defenders with him into Singley. Gets some help, but that's a good job on coverage as Singley did not cross the 20-yard line with that return. So Naugatuck will start inside their own 20 with this possession. Great job by Silvati. Well, Naugatuck with a different formation, a single back set. And they're going to hand to Gillis on the play, the fullback. Gillis across the 20-yard line, taken down by Latanzio on the play. Greg is one of the captains. Of Watch Holy Latanzio, Cross. number 77, play off the block of number 55, the pulling guard. That's Bonds, or excuse me, that's uh, Leahy. Takes on the block, makes the stop, and it will be a second, about six for the Naugatuck football team as they just tried to come right up the gut with that play. So second down for Naugatuck. Two wide receivers out to the left side. And a little bit of misdirection on the play. The second back getting the football. Bobby, Bobby Pure, the ball carrier. Pure will come on the inside scissors. Avoids a tackle there from number four for the Crusaders, Signot, and then 
able to pick up some yardage close to the first down before he is finally stopped. It'll be a third and short for the Greyhounds. We've got about 8.30 left to go in this first half. And we've mentioned that uh, aside from that opening short drive for the Greyhound offense and the score, they really haven't done that much. But I don't think they're going to make the first down either. As That's Kyle Wells. Wells. Wells just was closed off by that left side. Good job by number four for Holy Cross. And that Signat and his fellow teammates did a good job. And I think Holy Cross is going to force a punt here from the Greyhounds. And the punter is Gary Diaz. And Gary back at his inside his 15 yard line. And Gary earlier, Seymour Oil player of the game. We came up here to Veterans Field and Nogatuk's game against Sacred Heart. Ooh, a big mistake. The ball is fumbled on the other mistake. end, and Nogatuk will have possession at the 41 yard line. Just an awful, awful mistake by Holy Cross. Number 36, Mark Weaver, is, is going to be standing around making a block. Watch, he's going to stay on his block, and then just at the last minute, he's going to kick the football right there, just and that's that. all it takes. That's all it takes is right. That ball did not come to a rest. It was not dead, and one of the Greyhounds there just fell on it, and Norga took a big gift from uh, Holy Cross. Holy Cross has turned the football over a few times here this evening. Bobby Plitt will go in motion. Schultz back to throw, rolls to his left, looking downfield. He's going to run it now. And Schultz is hammered as he gets down to the 38-yard line. Taken down by Kyle Sinnott along with Ron Turmel. Watch Carmody. He makes a critical error here as he comes in. He gives up the outside. He's taken in. It allows the quarterback to get out and then to turn up make a couple extra yards he's going to pay for it Schultz is going to pay for it, turning it up as he gets drilled by number 55 that's term termel ron termel does a good job in stopping him but the quarterback picks up about four on that play carmody cannot give up the outside second down for Nogatuk at the 38 of holy cross and they're going to run the fullback and that is gillis on the carry They come with the belly, they try and come up inside with the reverse pivot. Holy Cross does a good job here in stopping that play. Number 50, and that's Charliglio with a good job coming from his defensive end position, sliding down, making a stop. Third and about four for Holy or for the Nuggetuck football team, maybe four down territory here. Kyle Wells will go in motion. Play fake. Schultz, the senior quarterback, unloads downfield over in and out of the hands of number 90 in the play the tight end that's Craig Servone Ivan Lusick I think number 20 is going to have coverage and he's going to get up just at the last minute and tip it away Schultz throws the football it's a catchable ball it's a jump ball downfield and a good job by Lusick getting up and tipping it away right at about the 12 yard line so it'll be a fourth down ball in the 35 Pretty sure it's a four down area for the Naugatuck Greyhounds as they'll go for it here on fourth down. Greyhounds with a power eye formation. And Schultz slides along the line of scrimmage and he tucks it and runs it. I don't believe from where he was tackled that he's going to make it. I believe the ball will be turned over to Holy Cross. Power eye, they fake inside to hold the linebackers, then Schultz comes out, he gets a good block, allowed to turn up inside, and right there he's going to get driven just back, and I don't think, as Eddie said, he's going to have the first down. They've already moved the down marker, so it is going to go over to the Holy Cross Crusaders. Breaking the action now, and let's take this timeout. 
Hot Tops, your number one custom printing professionals. At Hot Tops' new 15,000 square foot facility in Shelton, our automated textile printer will handle any size order quickly and efficiently. Artwork can be reproduced or designed for you in our graphic art department. As the largest in-house embroidery facility in the area and see why Hot Tops is number one. In business for 19 years, Hot Tops features an ad specialty product line that includes mugs, sports bottles, and a wide variety of imprinted items. For your next order, call Hot Tops, where your image is our business. We're back, everyone, to Veterans Field in Naugatuck in a very good high school football game. It's a Naugatuck Valley League contest between these two traditional rivals. Every time they get on a football game, it's a good game. Brunetti on the option, tucks it in, runs it on first down, taken down by Al Molnar along with Mike Green on the play. Reverse pivot, fake to the fullback to hold the play, and then Brunetti comes, gets to the outside, able to turn up the field and pick up a couple yards on a pretty good run by the quarterback. Some of the fans sipping a little coffee, but boy, or hot chocolate probably. But really not a bad evening here is we're in the ninth game of the year, and boy, usually it's pretty cold at this time, and it is really a pretty good evening to watch football. Well, buddy, when you don't have the win, that helps out an awful lot, as you well know. That is Brunetti throwing for Carmody, the tight end, the coverage provided by Singley, Diaz, and uh, let's see who else was in on coverage for Naugatuck uh, and Gillis on the play. Bootleg action again, and then coming from his position at the top of the picture is Carmody across the formation, unable to complete the pass, so to bring up a third, about seven for Holy Cross with about 519 left to go. The Crusaders have been able to dodge a couple bullets after some turnovers, and the last one I thought might have been very crucial to them with the ball in their own 34. They stopped Nogatuck and third and about seven. And Brunetti back to throw. He has pressure. He is whacked. Let's see who got to him. That was Green who got to Brunetti. And the Tom had all he can do to get the pass off. It goes incomplete. Let's uh, watch this again. I'm pretty sure he just sees this guy coming. He says, let me get rid of this thing because he got drilled again. Got the ball out of bounds. It'll be a punting situation. But a lot of lookout blocks along the line of scrimmage. Last couple plays here for Mr. Brunetti. His offensive line has not given him the type of support he has gotten earlier in this game, and he just got drilled on that one. Komulinski, that's all the kicking for Coach Jerry Charleglio, and, and Jeff standing inside his 25-yard line. Jeff, by the way, is a resident here, lives right here in Naugatuck, and attends school up at uh, Waterbury Holy Cross. And Jeff's punt rolls out of bounds. At the 35 or thereabouts of Naugatuck and the Greyhounds will take over again, seeing if they could uh, take back the lead. 7-7 game, our Cable 10 Sports Valley High School football game of the week. Somebody is having a sweet 16 party. And oh, how I wish it was me. I will analyze that. Uh, Boy, I'd like to be 16 again. That thought later. <laughs> First down for the Hounds. A tight formation. And running through on the play. Kyle Wells, the Naugatuck ball carrier. Good pickup on first down, close to the close to a first down. Good down blocking and then kicking out at the corner. Allows Wells to come up inside. Looks like Alex War with the stop as War gets down very low. Good job on the tackle. Picked up good yardage though by Wells. It'll be a second and about two, two and a half for the first down for Naugatuck as they're across about their own 41 yard line. Second and short. And they're going to run the fullback this time. That is Gillis. And depending on the spot, Jim might have picked up the first down. I think Silvati, number 44, is down at the bottom of that pile on the stop as they just come very quickly to Gillis up inside. Coach Jerry Charleglio could not say enough about that linebacking crew uh, of his because, once again, Holy Cross, a very, very good defensive team. And the defense has really held them throughout this season, uh, although that offense has not looked too shabby this evening when they have held on to the football. Third and short for Norga took the run out of the I formation. They're going to get to the tailback. That is Wells. He picks up the first down at midfield. Kyle Wells. 
185 pound senior. Mark Weaver on the stop for Holy Cross. Good job on, by Wells kicking out and then allowing the ball carrier to pick up the first down. Weaver on the stop, but a first down for this Greyhound offense with 336 left to go in this first half. Ball sitting right at midfield. And the toss. Kyle Wells out of the tailback spot down to the 46-yard line. And Tremel on the stop for the Crusaders. Looks like they're going to come wide with this, and then the ball carrier cuts back up inside. He runs into Carmody along with number 55, Tremel. Picks up a couple on that one, about five. Clock under three minutes here in this first half. Single back, the single set, and that is Gillis, and he gets the call, and Gillis spins forward. It's a short pickup down to the 44-yard line of Holy Cross. Time becoming a factor in this tie game now. Watch Carmody. He comes up inside, gets a piece of the ball carrier along with Trammell, but Carmody had a probably some kind of a blitz on or an inside move as he went right to the ball carrier. Be a third, about four for the first down. Holy Cross, Nogatuck not moving very quickly as we're going to go under 2.30 here in this first half and they need to pick a first down up here and to come, become serious about getting back into the huddle and getting out for a lot quicker. Well, Schultz can put it up, but right now they're concentrating on the ground game and that's Gillis straight ahead. Going to be a fourth, I think, in less than a yard. But tough up inside, they come with number 32 just trying to get that first down yardage, or Gillis, excuse me, number 22. It's going to be a little short. It's going to be a fourth down here for the Greyhounds. They're going to go for it at the ball right about the 41. They've got to get just inside that 41-yard mark. And the clock is running here. Fourth and about a foot at the 42 of Holy Cross. They're going to run Kyle Wells. He was hit initially at the line of scrimmage, but he, his second effort, he lunged forward. He's picked up the first down, down at the 39. Watch Wells as he will come over the block of Gillis. Second effort gets him across that 40 into about the 39 for the first down. Again, the clock moving. We are down to 129 left to go in this first half. Rocco Gentili on the last stop for Holy Cross. The Naugatu can throw the football, and here's where I think you're going to look for it to happen. Bill Schultz will go out. He's going to go out to one of his favorite targets. That's Joe Alvarado, and then he attracts a crowd of Crusaders led by Alex Moore in the secondary. Alvarado almost was able to break free of the first tackle. Just before he gets free here, watch the number of Crusaders who come to the aid of Looks like War there. War gets a piece of him. He'll go down low, and just as he's about to get away, he's going to get whacked by about three or four of the Crusaders. So he ends up picking up about four yards. Nuggetuck's going to use a timeout here. 57 ticks left in this first half. And thinking back, buddy, to how this game started, I thought we might be in for a long evening for the for the Holy Cross Crusaders and after the first score they really turned it around Let's get a look at some of the fans here along the sidelines here in Naugatuck a lot of renovation going on in that softball field out behind us and Naugatuck is just a great facility and a nice place to come Veterans Stadium a great place and always love to come here with Craig Peters and this Greyhound football team and especially tonight on such a beautiful evening but I thought Holy Cross was in trouble early, and they've straightened sure. themselves out. Well, not got their offense untracked. And not only that, after Naugatuck scores, after the opening uh, kickoff uh, that was fumbled away by Holy Cross, Holy Cross coughs it up again. Naugatuck has a great field position. You, you had to think at that time, uh, you know, watch out. Here we come, Greyhounds. But uh-uh, it's been a good one. Schultz back to throw on second down. Winds up, throws downfield. A diving in receiver. He was going again for Alvarado on the plate. Weaver on the coverage for Weaver, Holy Cross. Weaver does a very good job of staying with the receiver. A lot of contact. Weaver stays, ball inside the 10, 
Alvarado unable to come up with the catch. It'll be a third down for the Greyhounds. You get a look at the brain trust for Naugatuck. A big, big third down here. Ball at the 35. Third down coming up. Third and seven. And an obvious passing situation. Naugatuck would like to score before half. Dragging across the middle. Schultz completes it. Gillis will slide out of the backfield from his fullback position. He'll come right toward the Naugatuck sideline. Billy Schultz sees him, picks him up. He's wide open, and then after he catches, he's going to tack on about another 10 yards with a pretty good run. Gets down about the 21-yard line. First down, 42 seconds, clock running. And Salvati on the stop for Holy Cross. Now, I've been bragging about Gomielinski for Holy Cross, but Naugatuck has a young man, De La Rosa. He could also kick a field goal. And he kicked a couple last week against uh, Crosby, as a matter of fact. Alex War on the on the stop. And the ball carrier number 22. That's uh, the fullback and a busy player here, Jim Gillis. And uh, Nogatuck takes their second timeout with 29 seconds. They have one more left, and they will try and save that last one to use in case they want to bring their field goal to kicker onto the field. Ball sitting at the 15-yard line. Ricky De La Rosa, Bud, did not start the year as the place kicker for the Greyhounds, but the last few games he's moved in at that spot. And again, I mentioned he did kick two against Crosby last weekend right here at Veterans Field. So I think he has, he's within, he might be uh, right within his range right now. We've, we've got 29 ticks remaining in the first half. We've got a 7-7 game. It's been a well-played Naugatuck Valley League football game in this the next to the last week of the high school football season. Then we'll get serious with some of those playoffs. The number of the teams that we cover still have strong possibilities to be playing in that 11th game this year and possibly 12th game for state championship honors. It's always fun the playoffs. Second down. Passing formation. Schultz throws it out to Alvarado on the play. Alex War on the coverage. Alvarado catches the football, knocked down at the at the 10 yard line. Alvarado will run a little turnout. War is on him with pretty good coverage, but Alvarado's pretty big guy, goes up. Quarterback did a good job. Schultz putting the ball where Alvarado could only catch it. He's knocked down. About the 10 yard line, just inside the 10. And Naugatuck is going to take their last time out with 22 seconds left to go. And Joe is, we said this before, a 6-4 receiver, a real good target. Really did not play football before. Uh, last year was the first year, I believe, he did play football. Twenty board tells it all, and with 22 seconds, interesting calls here for Coach Craig Peters. They do not have a timeout left, and if they do choose to run the football, they are going to have to really hustle to get the next playoff. I would think that Coach Peters is going to try and throw the football and try and throw into the end zone with the opportunities that he has with first down here. So he's going to have three, maybe even four opportunities with incompletions. The problem is they've got to get the ball into the end zone because the same problem is going to happen if they complete it. They're going to have to get up and get a playoff very quickly. 22 ticks remaining. We're tied here, seven all, Veterans Field in Naugatuck. Our Cable 10 Sports Valley High School Football Game of the Week. Schultz back to throw. Throws it into the end zone for Alvarado. But he, Joe caught it, but you can see clearly he really did not get the one foot down in the end zone. So it goes as an incompleted pass. And Weaver on the coverage for the Crusaders. Let's watch it with you. Fade route as they just get the ball out. Watch Alvarado now as he beats the receiver on the outside. That's Weaver, and he's going to catch it. And boy, he's got some big strides because that was like a broad jump. He might have had the state record because he was out of bounds by the time his foot came down. That was close. All you need is that one in high school football. All you need is that one foot in. So with the incomplete pass, a second down, second and goal now. Schultz will throw it again. Schultz throwing. 
incomplete. This time the Crusaders had a better chance to get to the football. Again, Alvarado was the intended receiver, but Weaver had a better shot at getting the football. Got a penalty out there also as really Billy Schultz, I think, just threw that one out of bounds. Did not have a receiver. Cannot afford a sack here as the clock would run out. Play is going to go against Holy Cross. Probably a holding penalty. As you see Schultz get forced out of the pocket. Once he gets outside now, does not find a receiver. He just throws the football away so that he can run that next play. Penalty now, we'll see where it's going to go. Is it's going to go against the Crusaders, so it will be a probably half the distance. They'll get the ball to the five-yard line. With 10 seconds left to go, interesting call now for the Crusaders. It's inside to the three-yard line, so... I don't know how that one would be here. I thought it was a half the distance. Ball started on the 10. How would they get a seven-yard penalty? You can explain that one to me. <laughs> what I know now is that it is, uh, we've got 10 seconds left. We're tied at 7-all. And Margathic has it at the three-yard line of Holy Cross. That's what I do know. Schultz back to throw, looking out. Again, he's going for Alvarado. He's got it. And is he in? He's ruled in. Joe Alvarado. This time he came in. He had at least one foot in. And Norga took his guard up with five seconds remaining in the first half. Weaver just falls down. Watch Alvarado. He's got both feet in the end zone. Does a great job on concentration. Gets up. That Clearly. foot is down. Definitely. I'll tell you, I think he got them both in. He might have scored in the NFL with that one. And that's a great, great drive by the Greyhounds as they use that clock as well as any football team could use it. There's five seconds left, and they have a second touchdown here in this football game. De La Rosa for the extra point out of the hold of Bill Schultz. It is up. It is good. And five seconds remain here in the first half, and Norgatuk has gone up on top once again, 14-7. to seven. And, buddy, you got to like Alvarado. The concentration he really showed, and we are... are cameras gave you the great pictures on that play and the, that leaping ability Joe is an excellent basketball player up here at Naugatuck High School he used those basketball skills does a good job of concentration and then getting the football into his body being able to get those feet down let's, let's see it again watch now as Weaver just trips and falls but Alvarado with great concentration I think he's got both feet down inside the line and He's got the touchdown for the Greyhounds. Just a great drive and a great management of the clock by Craig Peters and his offense to get that score. They took over, were able to manipulate that clock, and then to finally get in the end zone with five seconds left to spare in this first half. You know, and Craig Peters has been coach. He's been around for a few years. This is he's completing his 26th year. I didn't say that, coach. coach. Well, I didn't say that. Clemens did. But the he's point the dean of the NBA. Well, he sure is. I'm being you sure. I'm being facetious. Oh my! <laughs> and he's been a great coach. The point is that when Craig said this about Bill Schultz, he's had a lot of great quarterbacks up here at Northern Tech High School, and he says that Bill Schultz is one of the headiest quarterbacks he's had up here, and that is high praise from Coach Peters. The short squib kick is covered at the 40-yard line, and we've got now three chicks remaining. Good job by the cheerleaders here as we wind down this first half, and I don't think the Nuggets have been this year. No, you're, you're correct. They are not with us. I mean, the, and some, some, something that we look forward to every time we come here to Veterans Field, but uh, they are not with us this evening. And Nuggets took high school marching band, and they are a great one. So it's a great pride up here in Nuggets. I'd like to take the Shelton, Nuggets, and Cheshire bands, put them together. Provided some great entertainment for us this year. Well, Brunetti will drop back, and he's going to throw downfield. It's going to be picked off by the Hounds, and we've completed. Dia, Gary Diaz on the interception. He was going, uh, Brunetti was going for Ivan Lusick on the play. So we have completed. We have put one half of play into the books here at Veterans Field in Naugatuck. First half score, Naugatuck 14, Holy Cross 7.
I hang out with a pretty trashy circle, the circle that helps this circle. It starts when we recycle trash at home. It's completed when we buy products made from recycled materials. Check the label for something called post-consumer recycled content. Then buy the highest percentage of it you can find. Complete the circle. Call 1-800-CALL-EDF for your free buy recycled shopping guide. 1-800-CALL-EDF. Welcome back, everyone, to Veterans Field in Naugatuck. And uh, Buddy and I will go over a little uh, summary of the first half, the scoring action, a little analysis uh, of the football game. Bud, first of all, let's first of all your analysis of the first half and, and what you've seen here. That was a very good half, especially for Holy Cross, except for that last series. Jerry Charlie was very concerned with his offense. I thought his offense played very well. Uh, his defense played played well also until that last series where Naugatuck was able to get the go-ahead touchdown. Both scores by Naugatuck have come by way of Joe Alvarado. Two touchdown catches, the last one a spectacular one in the corner of the end zone with five seconds left to go. Holy Cross got a score from Brian Binkowski tying the game up in the second period, but it has been a real very close football game and uh, I thought that uh, the game would hinge on the ability of Holy Cross to move the ball. I am very impressed with their offense considering the amount of problems that they've had, especially on the offensive line, as Eddie pointed out throughout the game. Well, so let me, let, yeah, that gives me an opportunity to detail just a, just a couple of players that Coach Charleglio has, has out. And you're so right. Uh, we, can, we can talk a little bit about what, they have to, what both teams have to do in the second half also. Holy Cross has, but first of all, they have a young offensive line. They basically lost their offensive line from last year. Now, two of the players that, that Coach Charleglio has really brought along and have done a great job, they're hurt. They're not in this football game. He lost Ken Ventresca. He lost him in the last game against Wilby. Mike Cashman was also doubtful for the game. That's his, that's his guard and tackle on the left side. So Jerry Charleglio, so what does he do? He moves in Ron Turmel. Ron Turmel is a backup offensive lineman. He's playing left guard this evening. Now, here's the interesting situation. He moves his son in, who is a backup tight end and is a starting defensive end. Chris Charleglio gives him a 50 number this evening. Obviously worked him out during the year, or I should say during the week. And really, this is a patchwork for a patchwork offensive line. I think they've given Brunetti some pretty good protection because Holy Cross, let's face it, they have gone to the past. They really need it as part of their offense. They really have, and they've been successful. I think when you come on the second half, Holy Cross, that Nogatoka won the toss and took the uh, option to defer, got the, the onside kick or the muff play, was able to score. They're going to get the football back in the second half, and it's going to be... Very interesting to see how Holy Cross handles themselves defensively. If Naugatuck can go out and put another score on the board, I think Holy Cross is in some deep trouble. So the first series is going to be a very big key to what's going to happen throughout the rest of this football game for the Crusaders. And once again, we want to emphasize that aside from that, the first series of downs for the Greyhounds, when they got the muff kickoff, they went, there was a short field for that first score. They really didn't do that much offensively, but they did get it in gear when it counted towards the end of the first Last half. Last three minutes of this first half, they put their offense back in gear. Big play by Alvarado on the pass from quarterback Billy Schultz. Got them the score. They've not really moved the football other than those two series, the first and the last. And we know that that coach, the veteran coach, Craig Peters, is going to do an awful lot of talking to his young men because he wants to get both, not only that passing game, but he wants to get that running game that's been a, uh, a trademark of Naugatuck back in gear for the second half. Well, that'll wrap up our half uh, our halftime comments, and we'll be back with the second half kickoff right after Valley Worthy of Note. Welcome to Valley Worthy of Note, a bi-weekly update of people, places, and events making news in your communities. Shelton Boy Scout Philip Lansbury is combining two passions in his life, working to earn his Eagle Scout rank and encouraging children and young adults to read. Lansbury, a sophomore at Emmett O'Brien Tech, started a book drive as his community project, part of the requirements of earning Eagle Scout rank. The books will be given to literacy volunteers of New Haven and Team's Head Start program November 10th, National Children's Books Day. They'll be able to take the books home if they don't, can't afford, you know, 
buying books, brand new books, and instead of going to the library, the Head Start and the literacy volunteers give the books out to the children and the families, and they support reading, and they have reading classes all the time. So hopefully they'll have uh, newer books to teach with the kids. A Naugatuck landmark, familiar to those passing by the town's green, is undergoing some extensive renovations. The Congregational Church's tower steeple, which rises 144 feet above the street, is being rebuilt due to ongoing problems with water damage. The architectural firm doing the restoration work plans to maintain the visual integrity of the original building, the construction of which was primarily funded by the Whittemore family in 1902. The work is expected to be completed by December 20th, in time for the Christmas holiday. A monument honoring Ansonia war veterans who died in action in World Wars I and II, Korea, Vietnam, and Desert Storm is scheduled for completion in time for next Memorial Day. A committee is currently reviewing the names of those fallen fighters that will appear on the monument. A dedication ceremony is scheduled for May 30th in Ansonia's Malice Park. We expect to have the uh, uh, Medal of Honor winner be the main speaker. We expect to have a, a jet fly over, the uh, Navy, Marine, and Army color guards will be here, the 102nd Infantry Band will play musical selections for the public. Uh, we also expect to have a number of our arm armored vehicles on display for the public to see. A group of inmates from the Cheshire Correctional Facility spoke with 7th and 8th graders at Long River Middle School in Prospect. The prisoner is part of the Steel Straight program sponsored by the state police, Region 16 schools, and town officials advise students to make the right choices. They shared how poor decisions had impacted their lives. Steered Straight is an ongoing program. Valley Substance Abuse Action Council will present a future segment. Trooper Nelson Alvasua is convinced of the value of the information. I think this is uh, one of the best ways to reach uh, the students of the 6th, 7th, and 8th, considering they're going into their teenage years and pretty soon they're going to be in their adult. Uh, being at the stage of their uh, life that they're in now, this is the major time of their life where they have to make good decisions, um, which is going to affect their uh, adulthood. Quite by accident, a 50-year-old time capsule was uncovered inside the cornerstone at Oxford Center School. The copper box had been placed there in 1948. Principal Richard Canelari and students found a 1948 edition of the Evening Sentinel, student essays, floor plans of the school, a scroll which all the kindergarten to eighth grade students had signed, a couple of pennies, and the deed to the property. Plans are underway to put together a new time capsule which will be combined with the 1948 container. However, fifth grade teacher Kate Lux notes there will be some distinct differences in the contents. It seems very apparent that this time capsule was, was pretty much adult driven, that, um, that there are a lot of deeds and, and papers and billing plans and, and it, it looks to me as uh, like something that the adults had decided what was important. <laughs> Worthy of Note has been a presentation of Telemedia Company. Welcome back, everyone. We are moments away from the second half kickoff here at Veterans Field in Naugatuck. Naugatuck leads it 14 to 7. And Gomolinski's kickoff goes to Singley. And Paul Singley close to the 35 yard line. Singley does a good job getting the kickoff and coming straight up the middle. He's going to get hit right about here, knocked off balance, still able to fight ahead for another eight or nine yards. He'll get the ball close to the 35-yard line for the Greyhounds. So they are ready to go as we open up this second half. Naugatuck with a 14-7 lead here. And they're going to get moved back very quickly as somewhere in the middle of that was a penalty in the... I don't think Naugatuck even realized they broke the hole right to the penalty spot. So probably a clip or behind the back and Naugatuck will start way back now inside their own 20. Well, the Greyhounds will start this first possession of the second half at the 19. And that's Jim Gillis to the short side of the field and he'll pick up the first down as he bounces it outside the 30 before he's taken down by War in the secondary. Outside belly as Gillis turns the corner, gets some good down blocks along the line of scrimmage. Watch War come up and take him on. 
plays off the block and just makes a good tackle for the first down for the Greyhounds ball at about the 32. First down for Naugatuck. They lead it 14 to 7. And they scored with five seconds remaining in the first half. The Schultz to Alvarado connection. And again, Gillis on the carry. And to the 35 yard line. Jim, a six foot, 195 pound senior, fullback. Belly play to the fullback, comes over the right side, picks up a couple yards before he's knocked down. Picked up about three, it'll be a second and seven. Ball sitting right at the 35 yard line early in this third quarter. Wing T look for the Greyhounds. And Wells will go in motion. And Schultz wants to throw out of the formation. And throwing it at the 45-yard line, he's going for the tight end, Servone. And it was knocked down on the play by a couple of the Crusaders. Good job, I think, for Holy Cross going right through the football as Lusick jump ball and coming right over the top, number 20 for Holy Cross, and that's Ivan Lusick with the stop it'll be a third about seven for the Greyhounds Alvarado out to the left side at the top part of your screen so going the tight end to the right wing T look for the Hounds and they're going to run again Gillis on the play and that is plugged up by the Holy Cross defense. No place to go as the fullback just tries to bump up in and then just get to the outside and he just has nowhere to go. He's going to lose a yard and bring a punting situation for the Hounds here in this first possession of the third quarter for Nogatuck in a good defensive series for the Holy Cross Crusaders. Ivan Lusick back deep and Diaz his punt is blocked and Charleglio fell on the football for Holy Cross you know what I almost said earlier though a lot of people threw on the punts this time he comes clear really is just a lot of time by the punter but he just is gonna get this one right into the chest by I think it's Charleglio who blocks it and it was, it was Chaleglio with the block. He chases it down. He's pretty unhappy that he wasn't able to pick it up and run it in. But great field position on the 16-yard line for the Crusaders after that block by Holy Cross. So Holy Cross is in business at the 16-yard line after the block punt. Benkoski running the football inside the 10-yard line. Tripped up there by Singley in the secondary. Holy Cross has had good success on this little counter. They fake to the fullback. That's Malone. Then come back to Binkowski. They got some people out in front of him. And Binkowski's got pretty good speed as he gets to the corner. Picks up about an eight on that first down carry. Ball inside the ten. Right inside the nine yard line for the Holy Cross Crusaders. It's going to be a second and about two for the first down. They need nine for the touchdown. Miguel Padro out to the right side. They have a wing to the right side. And Brunetti wants to put it up. He had a wide open Padre right in the center of the end zone, but the uh, junior quarterback just overthrew him at this point. At that point, Padre was wide open. Watch number 10. He runs inside, and boy, I'll tell you, <laughs> wide open is not the word. It looked like Kenny Hayward was just saying to everyone, I blew the coverage. Someone blew the coverage, allowing him to come up inside, but Brunetti... Could not get the completion. So a second goes to a third and short now for Holy Cross. So Lusick the wing to the left side. Padro out to the right side. I formation. Third and short at the Naugatuck A. Holy Cross looking to tie this game up. Brunetti again over the middle. Came back basically with the same play. And he completes it for the touchdown to Miguel Padro. 5'7", 170 pound junior. Padre comes from the top right across on a slant. Brunetti with a perfect throw right into number 10 
for the touchdown, and we are one point away from tying this up early in the third quarter. And we said first possession for Holy Cross would be important. They stopped the Naugatuck Greyhounds, forced the punt, blocked it, set up on the 16, three plays later, have gotten into the end zone. So Holy Cross right back in this football game after Naugatuck put a score on the board with only five seconds left to go in this first half. And Gomielinski to attempt the point after and to attempt to not this game. I don't think he made it. Well, that's unusual. The sophomore, Jeff Gomielinski to the right side. It's wide of the mark. And the score remains. Norma took 14 and Holy Cross 13. See if that affects the momentum of this football game on the Holy Cross side. Looked as if they were going to tie this one up and their kicker just came up short. Quick score though by the Crusaders on that first possession after the blocked kick by number 50 and that's Chris Chaleglio, son of head coach Jerry Chaleglio who has Really, I think done a yeoman's job being moved into that tackle position, still playing defensive end, and on special teams comes up with a big turnover. Now Gomulinski will put his foot into the football, and he drives Plurit. Is that Plurit? I believe 23, and back at the inside the 10-yard line. Bobby Pleur did return the kickoff back to the 30-yard line. Pleur will take it on the 9. Comes right up the middle at the hash. Breaks the tackle. War inside making the stop right at about the 30-yard line for Holy Cross. Nogatuck takes over. 9.06 left in this third quarter. So a quick score for the Crusaders. Nogatuck still leads it 14 to 13. Their second possession of the second half. And before we get the playoff, their flags dropped on the field. Looked like Billy Schultz was able to... Well, someone's going to move. Because I thought Chaleglio was in the neutral zone and... I don't see who moved for Naugatuck, but they are going to catch the five-yard penalty. It'll be a first and 15 for the Greyhounds. Looks like the left guard, right? Just that head bob by the left guard. You're right. Good job by Ron Carkett, our director, down in the truck picking that one up. First and 15 for the Greyhounds at their 25-yard line. Up by only one. It's Naugatuck Valley League contest, ninth weekend of the season. Bobby Pleard, or is that the, yeah, Bobby Pleard running the football for Coach Craig Peters. Carmody will take Schultz. Schultz will come down the line and watch Carmody. He'll force the pitch, but Schultz does his job, gets it outside to Pleard. Pleard will turn it up. He'll pick up about five on that play. On the option is he will finally get run out of bounds by Salvati along with Trammell. Be a second and ten for the Greyhound offense. Second down, second down for Naugatuck at their 30-yard line. Third quarter action, veterans field in Naugatuck. Handoff inside as Gillis running the football out to the 35, taken down there by Latanzio. Tanzio will fall off the block inside, grab a piece of the fullback and pull him down, but the running back, Gillis, picks up about five on that one. It'll be a third, four for the Crusaders. You can see the ball right at the hole in Nogatuck 36-yard line. Second possession in this third quarter for the Greyhounds. Alvarado will go to the top part of your screen. Wing T formation, Wells will go in motion. And they're going to give to the fullback, that's Gillis, and he's picked up the first down out across the 40-yard line before he's taken down by Carmody, 6'2", 195-pound senior defensive end. 
Gillis is able to pick through for the first down before Carmody wraps him up. He'll cross the 40. Bugatech with a first down on about their own 42-yard line as they have put two first downs together here in this drive. After Holy Cross came back with the score, missed the extra point, and we are 14-13 here. And that's what Coach Peters wants. He wants uh, that running game. He's, it's always been a trademark up here in the Arctic. Running the football well is the tackle made by Salvati, and now the Greyhounds are starting to move it on the, on the ground and establish that line of scrimmage. Salvati comes across the formation to make that stop. About a seven-yard game, but Salvati is... Pretty good linebacker. He's a junior, about 170. Good movement from tackle to tackle. As you to get a look at the cheerleaders here at Nogatuck. Second down, second and four for Nogatuck. They're at their 47. They'll hand off to Gillis. They're establishing that uh, that play inside, and Gillis to midfield. As the Greyhounds uh, doing a couple of things, they're going to step, hold on, you know, consume the time and. Russ Northrup on the tackle for Holy Cross, defensive tackle. Third and short for the Greyhounds. They want to control that clock. They want to maintain that ground game. And then when they loosen you up, they, they can mix in that pass. And the handoff to Kyle Wells. And Wells has picked up the first down at the 42 of Holy Cross. Kyle Wells on the handoff from Schultz. And now the Greyhounds dominating on the line of scrimmage. And the backs are running well and picking up the first down. The first downs at the 42 of Holy Cross. Holding on to a one-point lead. The second possession of the second half for Naugatuck. Wells will get the call from the left wing position and Wells inside the 40 down to the 39-yard line. That power football now out of the wing T set. Watch number 56 Clark as he pulls out allowing the ball carrier Wells to turn up inside for a couple. Clark has been in there and done a pretty good job for Nogatuck getting on in front of the ball carrier here in this drive. Double tight formation for Nogatuck as they pound the football. And now we have movement though on the left side of the Nogatuck offensive line. They were pointing to the Holy Cross players, but I believe that's going to go against Nogatuck. They can point all they want on that one. Just a little too much and too early for Nogatuck, and that's going to cost them five. They were just able to overcome the penalty a moment ago. Let's see if they can do it again. Watch the top of your picture. Both the guard and tackle just into the neutral zone very early, and it'll back them up. Second and about 12. Now this takes Nogatuck uh, off schedule. And Schultz holds on to the football. I don't know if he wanted to, to pitch it, but he ate the football, and he was hammered. Ron Turmel first to get to Schultz. Going to try and make the pitch to Bobby Pleur, but he just gets snowed under. Big guy there coming in, making the stop, Ron Trammell. Trammell has had a good game here defensively for Holy Cross. He also got help there from Kyle Sinat Kyle, on that stop. Kyle Sinat and also Chris Charleglio in on the stop for Holy Cross Crusaders. So a loss on the play for Naugatuck as the clock is running down here in the third quarter. Third and long now. A double handoff. The second handoff is, is on the turf. It is held onto by Naugatuck, but double handoff results in negative yardage and a fourth and down and kicking situation. There's the handoff to Green, and he's going to hand it off the other way, coming back. That was uh, Paul Singley. Looked like the number 26. So the Greyhounds will have to punt the football away. They had a first, uh, had a few first downs in that series, moved the ball effectively, but then have stalled. And Diaz's punt sails down to Malone. Malone 
And Matt Malone returns it close to the 20 yard line. Break in the action here at Naugatuck. Let's take this timeout. So is this um, sort of uh, a mentor program? Yeah. Mentoring and job shadowing. Yeah. Why did you choose? Because I would like to major in business management, and I felt this class would give me the opportunity to practice now what, instead of going out there in the community and making the snake out there. I thought they did that in school anyway. They, but you don't get to practice actually meeting with people from the community, ah. actually doing interviews with people outside of the community. So I, I, I like that. So the Crusaders have held the Naugatha Greyhounds in the middle portion of this third quarter, and they have the football back. They're inside their 20-yard line. And the fullback, Malone, out across the 25 to the 26. Norma took leads at 14 to 13. Watch Malone on the trap. Gets a good block from number 77. Let Tizano freeze him up in the middle, and he picks up about eight yards on that one. A good job inside on that quick trap for the Crusaders. Second and short for Holy Cross. They're at the 27-yard line. They're down by a point. Clock running here. High formation. And they'll give it to Weaver, who's now in a tailback. Mark Weaver, senior running back, with some good, good running room. Before he's taken down by Mike Green, it'll be a first down for Holy Cross. This is really just a blast as they follow the fullback and then Weaver gets outside. Nobody on the corner to contain him as he picks up the first down with a nice run. Gets across the 40, right across the 49 line for Holy Cross in a good, good running play by the Crusaders. First down. They'll run the fullback again. Malone, he's good. Let's see who stopped him right there. That's Suskovich, number 85, who dragged down Malone right at the line of scrimmage. Trying to come right back with the quick trap, and Suskovich does a good job playing off the block inside and making the stop on Matt Malone. Second down, about 10 for Holy Cross. I bet he never knew his size and weight here was good this afternoon, about 430 minutes. Second down for Holy Cross at the 40-yard line. Second and 10. They're down by a point. That's Weaver. And Weaver gets the corner, is taken out of bounds Whoa. at midfield. That should be a yellow. Wow. And there is no yellow. Derek Clark on the Norgatuck stop. Holy Cross has had great success getting outside the ends here with this tailback. And this time Weaver comes to the near side, gets around the corner, going to get knocked out of bounds. And if we stay with this, he's going to get drilled right here. That definitely should be a yellow flag. It was not. And Naugatuck is going to dodge a bullet on that one. The ball across midfield, though, into Holy or into Naugatuck territory with that run by Weaver for the first down. So Weaver has uh, been inserted at the tailback spot. He started the year as the number one tailback for Holy Cross. He started all year long on defense. And Weaver with good speed to the outside and tries the wide side of the field before he's run out of bounds by Mike Merrifield. 5'10", 170 pounds, sophomore monster back. I think Craig Peters is going to call down and find wants to know where his defensive end is here. There's no outside support on the last three runs by Mr. Weaver, and Mr. Weaver has some speed, as Eddie just said. He gets to the outside, and he picks up about nine on that carry. We saw Weaver last year as a junior running back, and he impressed us in the time he, in his playing time. And that's Malone on the straight ahead uh, handoff from Brunetti, and it's a first down for Holy Cross. They're going inside, outside. This time they come right back with the fullback up inside, just coming over the right guard for the first down. And Weaver and Malone have put together a couple pretty good runs here for the Crusaders as they are inside the 40 at about the Naugatuck 36-yard line. First and 10 for Holy Cross. Naugatuck leads at 14 to 13. We're under a minute to go in the third quarter. Getting the football is... 
Alex War, number one, who was flanked out to the to the right side, War on the handoff, and all the way down inside the five yard, inside the ten yard line before he's taken down by Gary Diaz. This is a good play as Holy Cross comes with a little counter. Ward just comes down the near sideline. He is very close to right there, stepping out of bounds about the six and a half to seven yard line. But there is no outside support for Naugatuck coming up on those runs by the Crusaders. And Holy Cross is taking the ball from their own 20 down to the Naugatuck six yard line on the basis of the outside game of Weaver, the inside game of number 20 or number 12, Matt Malone. Malone on the carry inside, the tackle by the nose guard, sophomore Roger Drown on the play. Reverse play, Drown does a good job coming off the block of the center. Kevin Seeley and makes the stop for about a one, maybe a half a yard gain for the Crusader offense. We are very close to the end of this third quarter. And the clock is running down here. Second and goal for Holy Cross. They're at the Naugatuck six-yard line. And they're going to run Mark Weaver, but he has stood up right away. It's Suskovich. What a great play. Joey, 5'11", 215-pound junior defensive tackle. Is He is a first-year player. You wouldn't know it. Outside, just the blast play. Good job again by Suskovich and company. Dragging the ball carrier down to the turf ends this third quarter and you may get a chance to see Golmolinski maybe try and redeem himself here in about another play or two. Well, we will find out what happens with this uh, Holy Cross drive, but before we do, we will tell you that it's the end of three quarters here at Veterans Field in Naugatuck in our third quarter score, Naugatuck 14, Holy Cross 13. Hot Tops, your number one custom printing professionals. At Hot Tops new 15,000 square foot facility in Shelton, our automated textile printer will handle any size order quickly and efficiently. Artwork can be reproduced or designed for you in our graphic art department. As the largest in-house embroidery facility in the area and see why Hot Tops is number one. In business for 19 years, Hot Tops features an ad specialty product line that includes mugs, sports bottles, and a wide variety of imprinted items. For your next order, call Hot Tops, where your image is our business. Welcome back, everyone. The fourth quarter here at Veterans Field in Naugatuck. Naugatuck leads it 14 to 13, but Holy Cross has a third and goal. They're at the Naugatuck 7. I formation. Brunetti, play fake. He's going to be brought down. That is uh, one of the captains for the Naugatuck Greyhounds, Nick Bonsick, 6 foot, 205 pound senior defensive tackle. Big, big play. But, buddy, you mentioned it before. And this is well within the range of the excellent field goal kicker, place kicker, Jeff Gormulinski. He's already kicked six on the season. Watches Brunetti just reverse pivots and tries to throw the football. He is, really has very little time. Good job on the sack by Naugatuck. And the Crusaders now are going to attempt a 28-yard field goal here to go ahead in this football game. Well, they set it up. The placement at the 18, and it will be a 28-yarder, but Gomielinski kicks it wide to the right side. So Gomielinski, who has been very, very accurate this year as a field goal kicker, has just missed the field goal, and moments ago, I should not moments ago, but when Holy Cross went up on top at the beginning of the second half and with a chance to tie the game, Jeff was, Jeff's extra point attempt was wide of the mark. So two missed uh, kicks here for the young sophomore. And with the missed field goal, the Greyhounds will take over on the automatic touchback at their 20. They lead it 14 to 13. And what Craig Peters wants, wants right now would be that effective ground game to get them in some pretty good field position and move this clock somewhat. Tailback, the second back. 
stopped at the line of scrimmage. Had to be a face mask on that one as I saw the head jerk back. Watch number 50 has got the ball carrier lined up. He comes off the block, ready to make a great tackle here, and then he just loses contact. And as he loses contact, you see that hand come in for the face mask. So going to go against Holy Cross, and there will be a first down for the Nogatuck Greyhounds. You see Craig Peters there along the sidelines. So Nogatuck now has it at the 35-yard line. They have the football. They have the lead, 14 to 13. And Gillis, the fullback, straight ahead before he's wrestled down by Carmody on the play, the defensive end. Trap up inside. Carmody comes from his defensive end position to stop. Gillis drags him down. Gillis picks up about two yards. And I, I'll tell you, you have to give a lot of credit to this Holy Cross defense. They have played a great game here tonight against what usually is a very strong running game for the Greyhounds. Well, once again, I mentioned that the strong suit for Holy Cross all year long, the one consistency has been their defense. They play good defense. Kyle Wells, the ball carrier, on second down, crosses the 40 to about the 41-yard line. Rocco Gentili on the stop for Holy Cross. Belly play just coming up inside over his right guard. Close, about three, three yards short of that first down for Norgatuck. A lot of fans down on that sideline with the cheerleaders as it is going to be a third down after this what looks to be a leg injury to one of the Naugatuck players. When we, when we resume play here, it'll be third down coming up for Naugatuck at the 41, third and three. They have to get to the 45 for the first down. Naugatuck leads it. And is, that looks to be uh, Jim Gillis, is that, no, that's Kyle Wells of 32. He's sitting up now. I think it's a cramp. Uh, we hope that's all it is, is a cramp. It is a cramp. And he's getting up off, uh, under his own power, walking to the sidelines. Kyle, along with Jim Gillis, Paul Singley in the backfield, all seniors playing the final home game here for the at uh, Veterans Field in Naugatuck because uh, on Thanksgiving, Greyhounds will meet Ansonia down in Ansonia for their traditional Thanksgiving Day battle. We'll have it for you on Cable 10 Sports. Schultz back to throw under a rush. It is going to be incomplete. He was going for singly on the play. And we're going to come up short. That is Naugatuck's going to come up short for the first down. Watch Carmody break and get help as the Pressure comes, forcing Schultz to throw the football. Never had an opportunity to complete it, and it's going to put Nogatuck in a punting situation, and we'll see if they corrected their blocking scheme after the last punt where Chris Charleglio blocked it, put Holy Cross in great field position, allowing them to score their second touchdown. Diaz to punt it away. Gary standing inside his 30-yard line, and he gets it off, and he sails it. Down at the 25-yard line. And they've been using either Malone or Lusick back there. Let's see who fielded that punt for Holy Cross. If we can get the number. That's Malone. And the tackle made by Plurid on the play. Good coverage by Naugatuck as they pull Malone down. I don't know if his knee was down there. It should have been for him. Matt Malone because he's driven back another five yards by that Naugatuck defense. So Holy Cross will start at their own 22-yard line. They were able to get down with a great drive just a moment ago, unable to convert on the missed field goal. They still trail by one point with 9.27 left in this fourth period. First down for Holy Cross. They have moved the football here this evening. And Bernetti throws it out. It is incomplete off the hands of his intended receiver. And let's see if that was Lusick, the intended receiver. 
Brunetti does throw into some red jerseys, but almost gets the completion to his intended receiver. Watch now, I'm not sure who it was, whether it was Lusick. That was Lusick. Okay, but there were four red jerseys right around that one, and Brunetti almost got the completion on it. Brunetti has done a good job here this evening. He has another year at uh, Holy Cross, 5'10", 165-pound junior quarterback. I formation, Malone is the fullback, the tailback is Weaver. And Weaver will try to get it to the outside. Good speed, but now the contain is there for Naugatuck. Might have been Mike Merrithew turned the play in for Coach Craig Peters' team. Merrithew does turn it in, number 20 when he comes up very quickly. This is what Naugatuck did not have in the last couple of runs. You see him force Weaver outside, unfortunately, Merriweather takes the mask, and he's going to get a 15-yard personal foul for grabbing that face mask, and it will give Holy Cross a first down. Some of the fans here enjoying this one. Not a lot of them, but they are missing a great football game, those who did not show up. As you can see, you can certainly find a seat in the stands here tonight at Naugatuck's Veterans Stadium. First down for Holy Cross. Lusick to the bottom part of your screen. Brunetti wants to put it up. He throws underneath. It's incomplete. He was going for the tight end. Joe Carmody on the play. So it'll bring up a second and ten. Remember back in the second quarter, they went to Carmody with a quick dump pass into the seam. This time the ball is behind Carmody. Cannot get back to it. It'll be a second and ten for the Crusaders. Padro to the top part of your screen to the bottom left portion. That is Lusick. Second and ten. The junior quarterback back to throw. Pretty good protection. In and out of the hands of Lusick on the play. It'll be a third and ten. Holy Cross, after running the football on their last drive, has gone almost exclusively to the pass. This time, Lusick tries to run a turn in. A little bit of a curl. Pretty good coverage, unable to hold on to it. It brings up a big third down. Surprised as to why Holy Cross has gone away from the run. They had great success in that last drive, especially with Weaver getting to the outside. This drive, they've gone mostly to Brunetti trying to throw the football. Third and 10. Football at the 35 of Holy Cross. Naugatuck leads it 14 to 13. Our Cable 10 Sports Valley High School Football Game of the Week. Brunetti wings it downfield. Well over, well over the head of the intended receiver, Carmody. Diaz, Singley, Hayward, and Kyle Wells all around the football for Naugatuck. Again, I think he throws into covers. There's going to be a lot of red jerseys around this one. Never had an opportunity to complete it as it was well over the head of the intended receiver. It's going to bring up a punting situation for the Crusaders. Gomielinski will punt it away for Holy Cross and single safety Bob Plurd back at his 35-yard line. And Gomielinski gets off the punt. And it's going to just roll to a rest down at the 31-yard line. We've got a break in the action here in the fourth quarter at Veterans Field in Naugatuck. Our school, including free estimates and towing service. All of us at Sabos would like to thank the Valley for allowing us to serve your repair needs for over 50 years. Welcome back, everyone, to Veterans Field in Naugatuck. Well, one of our production assistants... Uh, having fun there on the sidelines. John McGrath as we resume play here. Jim Gillis running the football on the first down carry and he's close to a first down for Naugatuck just outside the 40-yard line. Naugatuck leads it by one. And Suskovich into the lineup for Naugatuck, meaning Naugatuck will now go double tight ends. Tight formation for the Hounds as they just seek to run some clock here and just uh, 
hold on to the football and try to maintain this lead. That is Kyle Wells. He's picked up the first down close to the 45-yard line. Power formation. They come over the right side. Get two running backs ahead of the ball carrier. Wells picks up the first down. They were across the 40 to about the 44-yard line and try to, as Eddie said, maintain the drive. If they can get a touchdown right here, it could really end this football game. They need one more score, but they don't want to make any mistakes also in this drive to give Holy Cross good field position. Double tights, power eye. And they'll run Wells again on first down. And, he's and Wells maybe one on the play, maybe a, another yard on the play. Number 46 is going to make the first contact for Holy Cross. He comes off of a block inside, and he will wrap up the carrier. That's Derek Brunson, who gets credit for the stop. About a yard gain for Naugatuck. As you get a look down here on the sidelines at the Naugatuck, which looks like some of the younger Naugatuck players, watching and trying to learn because they will be in this position in a year or two. Second down, and they'll run Gillis. They go back to their base offense, and Gillis to midfield. Rocco Gentili on the stop for Holy Cross. Well, he play. Gillis comes, tries to find an opening, cuts back up inside, picks up a couple hard fought yards. Big third down for the Greyhounds. And again, the Greyhounds bring in Suskovich, and he'll line up as a tight end to the left side. Tight end to the right is Craig Servone. Third down, they're at midfield. The Greyhounds have to get it down to the 46-yard line of Holy Cross for the first down. They'll go to the short side. That is Kyle Wells, and he's picked up the first down. Great call by Craig Peters as they come to the short side with the pitch. Went to the double tight with the two split receivers or the two outside guys you got a lot of area to protect for holy cross and the pitch comes there's really no one outside allowing ball carry to pick up the first down as they cross into about the 43 yard line of the crusaders so a good call by naugatuck so first down for naugatuck at the 43 of holy cross and wells again out of the white right wing back spot kyle Crosses the 40 down to the 37. Again, a good call as again they go to the right side. Getting good blocking. That's number 56 again. Coming around the corner. That's Derek Clark. Pick up about five on that first down. And as Eddie talked about earlier, Naugatuck staying on schedule. When they're on schedule, they like to run the football. And if they can continue to pound it, they are going to do that in this drive. Third, the right wing back, and Schultz fakes, and now the captain gets around, contain, and takes it down inside the 20-yard line. Bill Schultz, a big offensive play. The 5'10", 180-pound senior captain playing his final home game. A little bit of boot action, and I think this is a run right from the start. Carmody will chase from behind. You'll see Alex Ward come over and unable to make the stop. Schultz turns the corner at the 30 and then finally driven out of bounds right at about the 20-yard line. A good run by the quarterback, Billy Schultz, getting the ball right there, right at about the 21-yard line. Lusick finally drags Schultz down, but not before the senior captain has brought the football down to the Holy Cross 20-yard line. They'll, they'll give the football to Kyle Wells, and Wells pile drives his way to the 10-yard line. Norga took dominating the line of scrimmage. Weaver on the stop, but in the secondary. A couple real good blocks at the line of scrimmage for Norga took, allowing Wells to pick up that 10 yards. It's a first and goal for Norga took with 4.46 left in this fourth period. And they have really controlled the football and the, the time of possession here in this drive. As the Hounds go to the to a power eye formation. Wells on the carry. Down to about the six, six and a half yard line. Carry number 37 on Wells. Back to winner 77. 
They bang up inside with Wells. He follows Gillis. Tough yards inside, but they're getting closer and closer to that goal line. Second and goal coming up for the Greyhounds. They're at the seven of Holy Cross. They have a one-point lead. They lead it 14 to 13. We're now under four minutes to play in this game. Schultz will fake inside, and he'll try to take it around the left side, but Chris Charleglio, number 50, with a great defensive play. They try to come back with Schultz on the bootleg, this time to the near side, and watch Charleglio come off the block, get a piece of number 14's jersey, and Billy Schultz with a big loss here for the Greyhounds. And Charleglio playing a great game here this evening, because he's gone all the way at defensive end and he's been pressed into duty at a offensive left tackle position here. Nuggetuck is going to take a timeout. They're going to talk it over. The ball backed up to the 13-yard line. It'll be third and goal. Holy Cross had their chances here in the third period into the fourth quarter. Could not convert on a field goal and a touchdown opportunity. Naugatuck right now trying to really put themselves in a great position with 3.38 left to go with a touchdown, but great defensive play that time by Chris Chaleglio has forced the Greyhounds back to the 13, and they've got to come up with a big play here on this third down in order to get some points. And it will be a third and goal for Naugatuck at the Holy Cross 13-yard line. 3.38 remaining. And that is, that time is official. Naga took leads at 14 to 13. This is our Cable 10 Sports Valley High School football game of the week. Schultz brings his team up to the line of scrimmage. Wells in motion. And Schultz throws it out. That is Alvarado, but he is going to be taken down at about the nine-yard line. Interesting call now when the... Greyhounds go for the field goal or choose to try and get the touchdown. They just throw a quick little screen motion there, trying to get Alvarado, and Alvarado really, as he gets to about the 10, just runs into a lot of white jerseys. Gentilly. get to the 9, and it's going to be a fourth down for Nugatuck, and they're going to take the time out here and talk it over on this fourth down play. And they have a decision to make. 3-0-2, 14-13, they're on about the nine yard line. And last year's game, if our viewers remember, came to an overtime game, was up in the Municipal Stadium, actually Ray Snyder Field up in the Municipal Stadium in Waterbury. In regulation, both teams had seven points. And it was a, a field goal by the older brother of Kyle Wells. It was Darrell Wells kicking the field goal and Naga took winning a 10-7 game. If I remember, it was raining from it was raining. start to finish in it that was, one. It was pouring. Matter of fact, we just started the game, and started the game, it was very overcast and very threatening, and, and then the skies opened up, and it was a great football game. And uh, this, this series has just produced great games right down the line. It looks like uh, Naga took is going to be setting up for a field goal. So it'll be Ricky De La Rosa who is the Nogatuck place kicker setting up for a field goal. Just saw a moment ago the time, 3.02 remaining. Nogatuck leads 14 to 13. The field goal would extend the, the Greyhounds lead to four points and mean that uh, my mathematics are correct that Holy Cross would have to score a touchdown. Get up on top. Schultz is the holder. De La Rosa to, to attempt the field goal from the 15. It would be a 25-yarder. The kick is up. It is good. And Ricky De La Rosa has kicked a 25-yard field goal and has put Naugatuck up by four. Our new score, Naugatuck, 17 and Holy Cross, 13, 258 remaining. Excellent hold by Billy Schultz. Straight down the middle on the field goal, and it's got more than 25 yards. You watch that thing still going as it goes through the upright. So Nuggetuck now with that four-point lead is going to or will force Holy Cross to score a touchdown if they want to win this game. Plenty of time, 258 left to go in the game. 
Holy Cross has all of their timeouts. They're going to have to move that football and probably move it by way of the air with Brunetti and company. So let's see what they're ready to do here with 2.58 left to go. They need a good return, and after that return, they need to get the football up into the air. We have seen already this evening Coach Jerry Charleglio reach into his bag of tricks. He brought war in on, in the second half on a, on a play to the outside, and he has uh, done some interesting and innovative things on offense. It's Servone to kick it off for Naugatuck. They lead it by four. Down inside the 10. And at the 20 yard line. Andrew Segetti just with a great tackle at the 20 yard line and that is outstanding special teams. Segetti will get the ball carrier right at the 20 and he wraps him up, takes him down all by himself. 253 left to go and 80 yards between the Crusaders in a game-winning touchdown. And that was Binkowski returning the kickoff for Holy Cross. The line of scrimmage, the 21. Brunetti to throw on a play fake. The ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage and it goes incomplete. He was going for the fullback, Mac Malone. Looks like Mike Farrell is going to get a hand on this one as Brunetti on the roll tries to get the football out to his fullback. Ball is going to get tipped right here. Farrell will get credit for it and Holy Cross will be second and ten. So Nogata digs in defensively. Second and ten from the Holy Cross 21. Trips to the left side. Brunetti throws it out again. Incomplete. He was pressured on the play. And it goes incomplete. He was throwing it out for Ed Conway, the nearest receiver in the area. Good pressure inside. Brunetti in the pocket. But as he gets rid of it here, he's going to get hit again by Farrell. Farrell right up in the arms of quarterback Tom Brunetti and it forced a short throw. It'll be a big third down here for Holy Cross. Third down. And to the short side, they're going to try Weaver on the play. And Mark Weaver is going to be taken down at the 26, well short of the yardage needed for a first down. Holy Cross does have all three timeouts. They could kick and try and stop the clock. We'll see what Coach Chaleglio tries here as they get Weaver to the outside. He's going to pick up about six before he is knocked down. Did not get out of bounds. The clock is running. First, I would think that Holy Cross has taken the time out here with 2.32 left to go, as I did not see you did, but Holy Cross has taken the time out on fourth down, so that would be an indication that Jerry Chaleglio is going to go for it here. Rather than waste the time out and kick the football and only have two left, he'd have trouble trying to stop that clock. 2.32 remaining. Fourth down, the line of scrimmage, the 26-yard line. Naugatuck leads it 17-13. to 13. And a reminder to our viewers that on Thanksgiving Day, we'll be covering the traditional battle between Ansonia and Naugatuck down at Jarvis Stadium. And right after that, we'll have highlights from the Derby Shelton Thanksgiving Day game. Fourth down for Holy Cross at the 26-yard line. I formation going for it here. They need the first down. Brunetti throws long and completes it. Padro on the reception for a Holy Cross first down before he is stopped by Bob Pleur. I thought this was a miss, an interception, and then the reception. Let's see how it happens. I thought he overthrew it. Well, we don't see it. I thought he overthrew it, but Padre comes down with it regardless, and Holy Cross is still alive. Well, 
On first down, it's uh, Bernetti going for Padro, and he misconnects there, so it's... There's the miss, looked like the interception, and Padro goes, comes up with the completion. Great job with our camera crew on that one, and Holy Cross missed the first down, so it'll be a second. Ball at about the 44-yard line. Still plenty of time, 2.17 left to go in this fourth quarter. And Bonetti has shown that he can throw the football. He can throw the short pass. He can throw the deep pass. Second and 10 at the 44. Holy Cross needs a touchdown. Brunetti throws, throws underneath, but he throws over the hands of the intended receiver, Ivan Lusick on the play. It'll be a third and 10. Lusick is wide open. He starts in the bottom of your picture, just slides across the formation. About a seven to eight yard throw, well over the heads, as you saw Lusick really wide open. Brunetti not able to get the completion of third down here again. Another big third down, Craig Peters walking the sidelines. I think he's telling our cameraman to get lost. Third and ten. High formation. Brunetti back to throw. Throws it short under the coverage. It was in and out of the hands of Lusick. Diaz on the coverage for Nargatuck. It goes incomplete. Another fourth down coming up for Holy Cross. Again, Lusick starts at the bottom of your picture and will just slide across the formation. Little better coverage, but still he's wide open, unable to get the ball to him. His quarterback, Tom Brunetti, and he's faced with another fourth and ten here. And again, the game is on the line with this play, with 2:06 left to go. Fourth and ten, and under a rush is Brunetti. And let's see who made the play. It was Mike Green from this backer spot coming in to make the play. 5'10", 190-pound senior linebacker. Green comes right behind the pulling guard in the vacated opening, and Brunetti never has a chance. A great job by Mike Green, and that's just an outstanding defensive play call by the Nuggetuck defensive staff as they get the sack. Now Nuggetuck, all they have to do is Kill two minutes in one second to come away with this victory and the win in the double L or in the MVL large division. And the handoff, it goes to Kyle Wells, and Kyle Wells brings the football close to the 25 yard line. Wells comes over the right side of the Offensive line behind Farrell Leahy and does a good job finding an opening. Picks up about nine yards. More importantly, that clock continues to move for the Greyhounds. We are down to one minute and 30 seconds. And Craig Peters will gladly take a four-point win right here as the clock is moving. A second and short. They're at the 26th. Nogatuk is of Holy Cross. I formation and they'll give to Kyle Wells and Wells picks up the first down at the 23 yard line. Reverse pivot by the quarterback. They go over that outside, do a good job of picking up the first down. Holy Cross will take their second time out here. Well, we will get a measurement first. I'm sorry, it'll be a measurement first as Holy Cross has requested a look just to stop that clock. 113 left to go. You'll see it as we do it, sir. Well, football link for the first down. And you see the clock, scoreboard clock. Score and a first down for Naugatuck at the 24 of Holy Cross. The clock is running, and all Naugatuck wants to do is, rem is run the remaining one minute of clock down here. And they will extend their record to seven and two on the season with the annual Thanksgiving Day battle against Ansonia coming up. That's Bob Plurd. Bob Plurd running the football for the grounds as the offensive line has uh, taken control here in the second half. 
Holy Cross with a loss will drop to four and five on the season, and they have their annual battle, the Thanksgiving Day battle, with uh, Wolcott coming up. That'll be in Wolcott. Good job again by Naugatuck just coming straight ahead. Yep. Buddy, let me thank uh, also our emergency spotter here. He really came on board. He did a nice, a great job. Kyle Gessick, who has really helped us out immeasurably here in the press box at the veteran field, veterans field in Naugatuck. Second time off for the Crusaders with 24 seconds left to go. I think right now the Holy Cross football team is well aware of their predicament and that's one of the reasons why Naugatuck has been able to run the last two plays. Holy Cross, we noted a few times, they, they began the year 0-3, and, and they really came out in the middle of the year, and uh, this will be the second game that they drop in a row uh, to Wilby uh, last weekend and and tonight to Naugatuck, but uh, really considering the start that they've had, Coach Jerry Charleglio's team has really come on, and and if they do defeat Wilcott, they they will end the year if on a 500 no. And Schultz just takes the knee. I think that's going to be the last play of this football game. We want to remind our viewers to stay with us because we have an award to present our Seymour Oil player of the game to the most valuable player upcoming. And the players from both teams will congratulate each other and uh, shake hands. And we have run matters down here at Veterans Field in Naugatuck. Our final score, Naugatuck 17, Holy Cross of Waterbury 13, back with the uh, Seymour Oil player of the game right after this. The heating season is here. The decision you make regarding your fuel, oil, and service is critical. In the heart of the winter, you need Seymour Oil. The company can depend on 24 hours a day, day and night, in any weather. Performance and delivery, that's what it's all about. Seymour Oil provides premium heating oil, 24-hour emergency service, our own licensed technicians, state-of-the-art facilities and equipment, financing and flexible payment plans. Seymour Oil, serving your neighbors with pride since 1932. We feel it's our job to keep you warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Well, buddy, uh, we came to a consensus, uh, and uh, we have gone to the defense tonight, although this uh, the young man who is our Seymour Oil player of the game also plays some offense for the Naugatuck Greyhounds, but mainly he's being recognized for his defensive efforts, and I'm referring to senior linebacker, number 31, Mike Green, our Seymour Oil player of the game. First of all, Mike, a couple of presentations, the plaque from Seymour Oil. Thank you. And the T-shirt, symbolic of just another great performance. Uh, first question has to be, Tommy Brunetti goes back with a big play. It's a fourth down. Really, game on the line, and you run the blitz. Talk a little bit about it, because you come up big on that blitz for the sack. Um, it was basically our defensive coach calling the play. Um, it was a predestined blitz. It was a, a pinch scrape blitz. We just we took it outside. Um, I figured I'd take it outside more, get around the offensive line, and it just happened. I made the hit on the quarterback and dragged him down. Big play in the game, big defensive series for you guys. Um, what did you think the turning point in the football game was for this team? Because Holy Cross stayed with you all the way through. Um, it was definitely the drive in the fourth quarter. Um, that's now took football, you know, ISO. Getting five yards of pop, five yards of pop, blocking up front. It was the offensive line, blocking, blocking, running powerful. You guys are a powerful running game. Uh, you come now to a uh, seven and two record. You could be eight and two. We go next week to follow you. Uh, how does this set up the game Thanksgiving between you and the Ansonia Chargers? Um, we have a lot of momentum coming our way with four game winning streak. Uh, after the loss of Seymour, um, we really had to turn ourselves around. Practice real hard. Everyone's making it to practice every single day. Um, we really got momentum behind us, and we're just going to see what we can do. Would it be fair to say that a victory over Ansonia would certainly make the season for the Naugatuck Greyhounds? Definitely make the season. <laughs> That'd be the happiest day of my life. Well, we're going to be there with you. We wish you the best of luck, and uh, congratulations on a great game, and this is a great win for the Naugatuck football team. Thanks a lot.
you know, I don't believe I have to tell anybody where we're going for Thanksgiving <laughs> because we're going to follow these Greyhounds down to Ansonia's Jarvis Stadium in their annual Thanksgiving Day battle. And once again, our final score here at Veterans Field in Naugatuck. Naugatuck 17, Holy Cross 13. And on behalf of our Seymour Oil player of the game, Mike Green and Buddy Chernovitz, Ed Clements, good night, everyone.